What's up, family? Welcome back to Anything Alexia. My name is Alexia, and today we're gonna be watching another true story animation. And that story is called I Wasn't Born Blind. My parents poisoned me. Mama and Daddy say, What now? And these families be savage. But before we start today's video, I need you all to smash that like button, smash that like button, smash that like button. And if you want to join our amazing family, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Oh, mom, do I have to drink it? Come on, Natasha, be a good girl and drink your shake. But I'm bored of drinking this. Bored of drinking chocolate shakes? Girl, maybe it's not your parents that are the crazy ones. I'm thinking it's you. Who doesn't like chocolate? Come on, you know it's good for you. Can't I have orange juice instead? Just drink it, okay? Stop messing around. I'm not going to tell you again. Wow, mom looks really angry. Looks like I'm not getting out of it. I picked up my protein shake and drank it. Okay, on second thought, that shake don't look too good. She be pouring that shake real quick into her mouth when it actually looks like something that would be coming out of my mouth when I'm feeling sick. You know what I mean? Ugh. When I got to school that morning, I went to find my best friend, Vicky. She always sat in the same place waiting for me, so I wouldn't get confused looking for her. I tapped my white stick on the ground as I counted the steps in my head. I knew that it would be 20 steps to reach the other side of the playground. Hi, Vicky! I called out. Even though I couldn't see her, I knew she would be there waiting for me. You don't look very happy, she said. I'm not. Why? What's happened? I told Vicky about my argument with my mom. She makes me drink this protein shake every morning. I'm so sick of it. Most kids be getting in fights with their parents for not cleaning their room, not clearing the dishes, sleeping in late. But my girl's getting in trouble for not drinking her protein shake? What's our mama trying to do to her? Make her become some professional bodybuilder or something? If so, maybe you can ask her to help me out too. Mm. You know, I was watching a documentary the other day on those shakes. They're really not that healthy. They're full of sugar and can actually do more harm than good. Vicky was a grade A chemistry student, so I guess she knew what she was talking about. You shouldn't drink them. You're a perfectly healthy girl. Apart from the fact that I'm blind, Vicky laughed. <laughs> well, yes, but that was something you were born with. Don't you love it when people laugh at you for stuff that you can't control? Make fun of you for something you were born with? Wow, what a nice friend. Seriously, Natasha, you should just stop drinking the shakes. But mom got so mad this morning. I don't want to upset her again. You could just pretend to drink it. Then when she's out of the kitchen, just pour it down the sink. That's a great idea. That's what I'll do. So the next morning when mom gave me my shake, I didn't complain at all. I sat eating my bowl of cereal, and after a few seconds, I heard mom get up. I just need to grab my purse from upstairs, and then I'll take you to school. Drink your shake up. I waited until I could hear her footsteps going up the stairs, and I picked up my shake. I emptied it into the sink and rinsed the evidence away. I sat back down just before mom came into the room. Good girl, Natasha. Good girl, Natasha. Who's a good girl? You're a good girl. You're a good girl, good girl, good girl. Uh, mama, you talking like I be talking to my dog. Mom picked up my glass and cereal bowl and put them into the sink. Come on, I'll drive you to school. On the way to school, mom chatted away. She had no idea that I hadn't drunk the shake. I went mm. to find Vicky. It worked. I didn't drink the shake and mom had no idea. That's great. I did the same thing for the rest of the week. Every morning, I would pretend to drink my shake, but really, I would pour it down the sink. Oh, our girl's getting a little sneaky. And I kind of like it. Saturday mornings, I always woke up late. I loved sleeping in, and it was about 10 o'clock when I eventually woke up. I opened my eyes, but had to close them again really quickly. I had seen something bright, like a light, and it had dazzled me. I opened my eyes and blinked again. I didn't know what was going on, but I could definitely make out something bright. Every morning for the next week when I woke up, things began to get clearer and clearer. Is my eyesight coming back? I didn't want to get mom and dad excited, so I didn't mention anything to them. To be honest, I didn't want to believe it myself, just in case I was wrong. But by the end of the following week, I could see everything clearly. I gazed around my bedroom. It was beautiful. I had always imagined in my mind what the outside world looked like. 
But as I looked out of my window at the flowers and trees in the garden, I realized the colors were far more vibrant than I had thought they would be. I couldn't wait to go downstairs. I was finally ready to tell my parents I had gotten my sight back. I ran downstairs. Be careful, Natasha. You might slip, said Mom. You don't have to worry about me anymore. I can see! I can see! I looked at my parents, and for the first time, I saw what they looked like. And what I saw? I didn't really like that much. Mama's hair was all ratty. Dad's beard was all stubby. And they both had some boogers up in their nose. That kind of makes me wish I was still blind. Because seeing that burn. Ugh. Mom had beautiful blonde hair and aqua blue eyes. My dad was the complete opposite. He had black hair and dark brown eyes. I can't believe that I finally know what you both look like. Mama, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. I can see. I kind of wish I couldn't because you have that disgusting snot rocket on your nose. But I can see. Are you proud of me? Mom and dad looked at each other. I expected them to be jumping for joy. But instead, they looked a bit annoyed. Natasha, did you stop drinking your shakes? Asked mom. I didn't want to lie to her. Yeah, I'm sorry, mom. I just got bored of drinking them. You shouldn't have done that. I was so confused. I wondered why mom was going on about the protein shakes when I just told her that I can see again. The following morning, I woke up early. I heard mom and dad going outside to the car. I looked out the window at them, but what I saw shocked me. They both looked entirely different from the day before. It was as though they were wearing face masks. I began to feel a bit suspicious, so I decided to ask Vicky to help me. I called her and told her my good news. That's amazing, Natasha. I can't believe you can see. It's so exciting. Yes, I'm so happy. But the reason I'm calling is, do you think you could check out the ingredients in my shake for me, please? Vicky agreed to help me. Her parents weren't excited that she's not blind anymore. And now they're leaving the house in some creepy disguise? I'm confused. But looks like our girl's about to be doing some FBI investigations on those protein shakes of hers. And we'll see if we catch anything. Let me know in the comments down below if you think the protein shakes are good or if you think the protein shakes are bad. I'm not too sure right now. So later that day, I took the box of shakes over to her house and left it with her. It will take a couple of days to find out exactly all the ingredients, but I will let you know as soon as possible. A couple of days later, I was sitting in my room doing my homework when I got a call from Vicky. Are you sitting down, Natasha? Yeah, why? There is something in your shake that reduces your eyesight. With the amount that you have been drinking over the years, it was enough to make you blind. I couldn't believe what she was saying. Could my parents have known what was in the shake? Had they intentionally been giving me a drink with poison in it? I knew there was only one way to find out. I was going to have to confront my parents. I walked until they were both sitting in the lounge together. Did you know that my protein shakes you were giving me every day was the cause of my blindness? What are you talking about, Natasha? Vicky tested the ingredients. I know there was something in it that made me go blind, and you were so insistent on me drinking it every day. Okay, yes, you're right. We did know. But it was for your own good. For my own good? Poisoning me to the point that I go blind good? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't think that's something you want happening to you. These parents are officially sketchy and very savage. And not in a good way. You're crazy. I don't know what's going on with you two. You wear face masks when you go outside. You forced me to be blind. What is wrong with you? I didn't know what to say or do next. I couldn't believe my own parents had done something like that. I had to get out of the house and away from them. I hate you. I don't want anything more to do with either of you. I ran out of the house and down the street. I had no idea where I was going, but I had to get as far away from my parents as possible. I ran and ran for what seemed like hours. Eventually, I found myself at the far side of town. It was a pretty rough area with lots of empty, boarded up houses. I slowed down and began to look around for somewhere I could shelter. I would need a dry place to sleep until I could work out what I was going to do. It was getting dark and it looked like it was going to rain. A dog barked at me from across the street. I kept on walking, hoping that it would ignore me. I had almost given up hope of finding somewhere when I walked around a corner and saw a door to a house and it was open. I went inside and called out. 
Yeah, cause going in a random creepy house in a neighborhood that you don't know is always a great idea. Girl, I know you haven't been blind for around a day now, but you're already making some pretty sketchy choices. You might not be blind anymore, but that doesn't mean you could be stupid. Dang. Hello? Is there anyone home? There was no reply. I went further in. The house was full of furniture. It looked like someone had just walked out, leaving all their belongings behind. It was perfect for me. I decided that I would stay there for as long as I could. The next morning, I got up and went into town. I was hungry, but I didn't have any money. As I walked along the street, I could smell fresh coffee brewing. My stomach rumbled loudly. The smell was coming from a cafe on the corner, and I went inside. I was hoping to ask for something free to eat, but before I had a chance to speak, the woman inside said to me, I'm sorry, I'm too busy to serve you. My helper has just quit on me. I'm looking for a job if you need a new helper. The woman looked at me. Okay, you're hired. Put the apron on and come and help me make some breakfast. I couldn't believe my luck. I had got myself a job. When the morning rush was over, I sat down with the woman and we had a cup of tea and something to eat. You worked well, Natasha. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I spent my days working in the cafe and my evenings in the house that I had found. It wasn't a luxury life, but I had all that I needed. Uh, getting a free house and having a job that pays your non-existent bills because your house was free sounds pretty luxury to me. I mean, if anyone wants to offer me a free house, I'll gladly take it. But I'm just saying. At least someone wasn't trying to poison me. I began to forget all about my parents until one day something happened that really shook me. I was walking through town on the way home from work when I saw a couple walking towards me. I felt sure that it was my mom and dad. Of course, they were wearing masks as they always did when they left the house. I have no idea what got into me, but I suddenly lost my temper. I ran straight up to them and tried to pull the masks off their faces. Ah, what are you doing? Asked the woman holding her face in pain. Get away from us, shouted the man. They weren't wearing masks at all. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I thought you were someone else. I ran straight home as fast as I could. Don't ever do anything like that again, I said to myself. It was only a few days later when I was on my way home from work again, when I saw another couple that looked just like my parents. Fear started rising up inside me, but I told myself to calm down. I calmly walked towards them. Suddenly, the man grabbed hold of my arm. Come on, Natasha, you're coming home with us. It was my dad. I tried to struggle, but he was too strong for me. Come with us and we will explain everything. No, no, leave me alone. We're not going anywhere until you agree to come and listen to what we have to say. Don't do it, girl, don't do it. It's just gonna be another trap. Once you get home, they're gonna try and poison you again. But this time, it ain't gonna be in the shakes. Oh, no, no, no. They're gonna try and hide it in an apple, maybe a chocolate chip cookie, or even a chicken nugget. How are they gonna ruin chicken nuggets like that? That's rude. I got into the car and we drove home in silence. When we got back, mom and dad told me everything. The reason we gave you the drink was to protect you. You see, we are wanted by the police. During the daytime, we wear masks to hide our identity. But once we get home, we take off our masks. We didn't want you to see our real faces. But you poisoned me for my whole life. You guys are sick and crazy. We only did it to protect you to stop you from finding out our true identity. No, that's a lie. You're selfish, both of you. You only did it so that you could walk around at home without wearing your masks. What kind of parents do something like that to their daughter? I'm sorry you feel that way, Natasha, but you can't leave the house now. You can't keep me here, I have a job. I'm sorry. We can't risk you telling anyone who we really are. Newsflash, Mama, she still has no idea who you are. Because y'all be keeping too many secrets. We can't risk you telling anyone who we really are. Please, uh, I promise I won't say anything. You have to let me go. But they wouldn't. They took me up to my room and locked all the doors. There was no way for me to escape. They kept me a prisoner in my bedroom. They didn't even let me out for meals. Instead, they brought a tray of food to my room. It went on like that for weeks and weeks. I never saw anyone other than a glimpse of my parents when they pushed the food through the door. One day, I was laying on my bed when I heard the sound of someone knocking at the front door. I jumped up and looked out of my bedroom window. I couldn't believe it. 
Vicky was standing in my garden. I banged on the window as hard as I could. She looked up, and when she heard me banging, I started waving my arms and screaming, Help me! Help me! My parents have locked me in here! I have no idea if she heard me or understood what I was saying, because the next thing I saw was her walking off down the driveway. I suppose my parents must have told her that I wasn't in or something. I felt so sad and in such despair. I'm never going to get out of here. I lay back down on my bed and tried to go to sleep, but it was of no use. I just lay there staring up at the ceiling. Suddenly, I heard the wail of sirens. My heart started pounding. Were they coming here? I looked out of the window again. Four police cars had pulled up outside of my house. Their lights flashing and sirens screaming. I watched as the police ran up to my house and the next thing I knew, my bedroom door had been kicked in. You're safe now, Natasha. Your parents won't be able to harm you ever again, said a police officer. They took me downstairs and out to a waiting car. I watched as they brought my parents out of the house, handcuffed, and put them into another police car. Where are you taking me? Your friend Vicky is the one that called us. She told us everything. Her family have said that you can go and live with them if you like. Yes, please. I would like that very much. My parents were arrested and sentenced to 10 years in prison. I live with Vicky and her family now. I don't know if I can ever forgive my parents for what they did to me. For now, I'm just trying to enjoy my life. Wait, what? You're just gonna end the story like that? What did the parents do? What was their secret that they were hiding? Why did they go to prison for 10 years? There are too many questions and not enough answers. But I am happy the girl's not blind anymore and that she's staying far away from her psycho parents. Cause you know, everybody's parents can be psycho, but not that kind of crazy. So moral of the story, if your parents ever offer you a protein shake, say no. And maybe just ask for a piece of chocolate cake instead. That's probably safer. Maybe. Kinda. Not really, to be honest. I don't know. But anyways, family, that is all of the true story animation that I have for you today. If you like today's video don't forget to smash that like button and if you want to join our amazing family all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of our videos i love you all so much and i'll see you all in the next video